During the crisis, the ship's master will be responsible for ensuring proper communications. Although he may enlist the help of a crew member to coordinate information to allow him to keep a broad overview. This helps the ship's master avoid tunnel vision and at the same time keep track of all members of the emergency squads and firefighting equipment. This accountability is very important since safety is a critical component of the fire response. Finally, the captain will coordinate the efforts of the fire team with the emergency plan. Ultimately, it will be the captain's decision if it is necessary to abandon ship. The actual fire is fought by the emergency fire team. This team is normally led by the chief officer. With larger crews, a vessel may have two teams. When this occurs, one team is led by the chief mate and the other by the first assistant engineer. The teams back each other up. During a fire on deck or in living quarters, the chief mate's team will be the lead team, while the other team, led by the first assistant engineer, will act in a supporting role. If the fire is in the engine room, the roles will be reversed, with the chief mate's team serving to support the first assistant engineer's team. During training, be sure and cross-train members of each team so that they may assist as needed. Regardless of which team is in command of the fire suppression effort, the team leader will immediately report to the scene and supervise the tactical operations. He will oversee the implementation of fire suppression strategy and communicate with all tactical units. The officer in charge of the fire team will keep the bridge informed of the current situation as operations progress. After the alarm is sounded and the team's muster, roll call is done. At this point, the senior officers can determine if any crew members are missing. If someone does not show up at muster, a rep ...attention to an engine room fire that has gone beyond the incipient phase and has entered the free burning phase. Here, extreme levels of heat and smoke have accumulated in the overhead. Visibility can be non-existent. If a fixed system has not or cannot be employed, a team of firefighters may be required to go in and combat the fire. In this scenario, the decision to use foam to put out the fire is made. The firefighting team consists of a water hose team, a foam line team, and a team leader. Before the team enters, a decision must be made regarding ventilation. Elimination of ventilation points will cut down on the amount of oxygen feeding the fire but this keeps heat and smoke from escaping, making entry difficult. This is a strategic decision that must be made on the part of the team leader. Opening up for ventilation vents will allow smoke and heat to exit, but will provide oxygen to the fire. Caution. When entry is made into a closed space that has not been ventilated, the entry point may become an inferno as heat, smoke, and flames vent themselves through the opening. The team leader decides that the heat and smoke in the space is too great to enter without ventilating and makes the decision to ventilate so that firefighters can enter the room. As the team enters the room and makes its way down the ladder, they encounter conditions that are extreme and perhaps even life-threatening. High levels of heat and smoke make firefighting very difficult. The team manning the water hose uses the water for protection. The foam team is responsible for applying the foam to the fire. Both teams advance toward the fire. As the teams approach the fire, foam is applied. The water hose team continues to provide protection, being careful not to disturb or break the foam barrier that is forming. Breaking the foam blanket covering the fuel can cause reignition. 